So in this lab, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire together our inputs. We're just gonna do the inputs, mainly because what I wanted to do was I wanted to show you input separately and I wanna show you output separately. And I really wanna talk about each one individually because there's actually a lot of knowledge that you guys are gonna to need to know that you know is gonna be on the background. A lot of it's just terminology, stuff like that. So I want to, I want to kinda of go over that specifically. So what I'm gonna do in this first part is I'm just gonna oversimplify um, the whole input wiring, how it's gonna work, okay? And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you the PLC. I'm gonna talk about the inputs that are actually physically on the PLC. We're gonna look at the schematic for them, and then I'm actually gonna have one wired together, and I'm gonna show you how it looks and how it operates, okay? So this is probably the number one most um, difficult thing for students to do. They constantly have problems wiring together our inputs or our outputs, and we're gonna do, the, like I said, we're gonna do the outputs in a minute, but they constantly will be wiring them wrong. Uh, you see a lot of people will go in, they'll actually hook up two switches in series inside of the circuit, and then that'll create a whole bunch of more problems. But what's gonna happen is every item will be on its own circuit. It'll have its own dedicated circuit, I should call it. They're going to be controlling DC positive power. So. When I say this, this gets into a really kind of hairy area and can get people really confused. There are two types of inputs, wiring styles out there. Those are syncing and sourcing. We will be doing a syncing um, wiring diagram or wiring process or style. Um, the sourcing is just, all we're doing is flipping it. Instead of controlling the positive voltage, we are now controlling the negative, okay? So, and I'm gonna show, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more on the schematic. I'm not even gonna show you guys the sourcing one because we're only gonna be doing syncing. The reason there is two different styles out there is because um, across the pond or whatever over in Europe, they do things a little bit differently. So they always did things sourcing while we've always done things syncing. So when you buy sensors, you'll have to buy specific sensors that are syncing or sourcing. So that's, that's something you're really gonna need to know if you're ever buying parts or maybe replacing something like that. Also, it could become very important if you are troubleshooting, mainly because when you're troubleshooting a electrical circuit or an input circuit, you will be tracing the power or voltage along trying to figure out where it might be cut or if the switch is bad. But if you don't know that you're working on a sourcing versus a syncing circuit, it could create a huge problem, okay? So that's something, if you need to talk more about me, with me, let me know and I'll kind of talk more about it, okay? But my oversimplification goes like this. There is two types of terminals on our PLC. There's going to be a DC common and then there's gonna be the actual input terminals. And I've just drawn two of them. I believe our PLC has nine, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is we are going to apply negative voltage to this one. I'm just gonna put DC negative underneath it, okay? This is, we're gonna put DC negative and we're gonna put it right there. Now, the voltage going to our, our inputs will be DC positive. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna do a rail and I'm gonna kinda try to match it to what the actual schematic is gonna look like for the Allen Bradley. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna be a positive rail. So this could be our terminal block right here. It's gonna come in, it's gonna to go to a switch. It does not have to be normally open. It's just gonna be some style of switch. So when we press that button, DC, well, let's write DC right here, DC. DC power will flow through the switch into the terminal, meaning right here, if I point an arrow, we'll have 24 volts. 24V, okay? If it doesn't see 24V, it's not gonna turn anything on, it's not gonna change anything, or 24 volts. It's not gonna see anything. Now how this is gonna work is inside of our, our PLC, let's say, now we're gonna talk a little bit about the program inside of here. The program will have what they call instructions. And it's just gonna look like a contact on, uh, on a relay, okay? So, if this sees 24 volts, what it's gonna do is it's gonna to go to whatever contact inside of here, instruction, let's call it, that has been coded or addressed. So this one will be I colon zero slash zero. If it's addressed the same as that input, when that input gets power, this will change. So suddenly it's no longer open, it will become closed, okay? And we're gonna go over this a lot more as we go along. Right now, what's really important is we're trying to get down the, 
the understanding of how to actually wire all these terminals in. And this could become a little bit tricky, okay? So again, we could also have another switch coming over. This one could be normally open again. Oops, dang, I did not line those up very well, did I? Sorry. Let's go ahead and uh, do this. This is another circuit. Notice there's only one switch on each one, okay? Now we remember that inputs are always something that is a switching mechanism. It could be a push button, it could be a sensor, it could be a limit switch, it can be a door switch, it could be a, anything. Only thing it can't be is an e-stop, remember that. Um, so this is pretty much it. We're gonna apply negative power to our DC common and we're just going to control whether or not these terminals have 24 volts. Now something's very important, do not think that the PLC is smart in any way. It knows whether you've got 24 volts or you don't. Literally, you could come over and touch the terminal with a wire and it has no clue if that's a switch, it has no clue what's connected on the end of it. It knows it's getting 24 volts or it's not. All right? So, that's kind of the, that's our broad over or overview, uh, oversimplification of uh, how inputs kind of work. What I want to do is I want to talk uh, with our PLC and I want to point out the terminals and then let's check out that uh, schematic. All right, now we're back uh, back at our PLC. I'm just going to kind of point out a couple of these terminal block or terminals here. That way we can kind of get an idea on what some of this stuff does. That way when you're hooking up stuff, you're kind of like, you know what you're talking about, right? So the first two right here, this one and this one, these ones are our DC positive terminals. Now, Yes, you can run anything that is a sensor, anything that's an input can be ran with these DC outputs. Or, and these are DC voltage outputs, they're not DC outputs to like run something. So they, but they can only be used on inputs, they cannot be used on outputs. I don't know if they just don't have enough juice or what the deal is, but they have to be, they have to be only used on the inputs. So what we're, what we're gonna do in this class is I've already set up our DC uh, power supply. The reason for that is just because we had to do it for the outputs and I'm probably gonna use them for everything, mainly because there's more terminals and it'll be easier to stick more wires in them, okay? Uh, doesn't mean you have to. If you'd like to use these, uh, go right ahead, okay? Um, next, we have our DC common terminal right here. Um, we have to, we hook up a DC common and then it, it I won't want to say it powers up these next three terminals, but it supplies the DC common for the next three terminals, okay? If you don't have the DC common, these three terminals will not work. You can supply 24 volts to them, but they will never work. Same with this one. See how this DC positive goes for the next five terminals? Again, if you don't put the DC common in this one, it will never let any of these five terminals work. Um, so back to what I was saying though, you're going to hook up your DC common here. This is an input. This is our first one. And this one's like I slash I colon zero slash zero. Okay. So, and that's the way they're numbered. They're going to, this one's going to be I colon zero slash one, I colon zero slash two on down. Okay. And you're going to address the instructions inside the program, depending on which terminal you would like to have control it. So. We're gonna make sure we got 24 volts going into one of these if we wanted to do something. And we're, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm actually gonna hook up the common and I'm just gonna hook up I colon zero slash zero, okay? Um, everything that's gonna start, on, all the inputs are gonna have I in front of the address. All of the outputs are gonna have O in front of the out, or I'm sorry, all of the outputs are gonna have O in front of their addresses, okay? So another way to kind of keep things separate, sometimes you'll go along and people will accidentally put the wrong address for the different things. Let's take a look at that schematic because I think it's gonna clear up some of our, our wiring you know, issues. So here is our schematic, and, and this is the schematic out of the actual Allen Bradley handbook, so don't think that I've drawn this up or I've made this somewhere. This is the syncing input uh, schematic you can see that right here there is one just like this for the sourcing only difference is instead of having DC positive here it will be DC negative instead of having DC negative right here it will be DC positive so hopefully that's uh, I'm also kind of helping you guys because there are some test questions on syncing and sourcing just remember one is one way one is the other okay again we have our terminals that are 
are good for our DC input. We can use this as our, our power to supply it to all of our sensors, switches, stuff like that. Again, it's not able to turn on outputs. Now, and here's our DC common. Again, it's just gonna have a negative voltage run to this DC common, um, and all of these are exactly the same. Okay, so this, oh, and I didn't, I didn't really talk about these three uh, when I was pointing stuff out. These three are gonna be our analog inputs. We're not gonna be using these for a while, so go ahead and don't worry too much about these. You should never need more than, you know, I don't know, six to nine input terminals. Um, but these ones are kind of special for doing that analog. Remember, we are only gonna be using digital or discrete inputs, um, which pretty much means the same thing. You'll, you'll often hear engineers go, oh, that's a discrete input or that's a you know discrete output or whatever. Um, discrete literally means on or off. It's digital, it's, it's on or off. You have power, you don't have power, okay? So just know that that's a little bit of terminology that you will, one, be tested on, and two, you will hear around, okay? So, well, the main, the main attraction here is gonna be these, this schematic right here. And I've seen a bunch of stuff trying to make this simpler, but I don't think it can get much simpler than this schematic right here. You're gonna start from a DC positive. You're gonna go over, and like I said, this can be our terminal block right here. And that's just a bunch of, bunch of uh, places to plug in wires that are you know, positively charged, okay? The one thing about these terminals right here, as of right now, they are not shut off with our e-stop. The one thing is, um, e-stops don't always have to turn off the whole circuit. Most of the time, they really just have to turn off the DC outputs, okay? Or the outputs, they could, I guess they could not be DC. Um, but just know that these are not connected into that circuit. So back to what I was saying, these guys right here, this could be our terminal block, and it's literally just gonna go through a switch right here. Now I know that this is a, this honestly looks like a limit switch of some sort, but this can be any switch on earth. It can be the auxiliary to our motor controls. It can be the overload um, terminals that are on our overload, you know, when that, when that overload pops or whatever, we can, we can sense that and then we can actually use it in our program um, it could be a push button, it could be a switch, it can be literally pretty much anything as long as it's on or off, right? Um, we have nine different inputs because you can see that these ones over here and plus these ones over here make up the nine. I think there's actually ten, I'm sorry, because one, it always counts zero right here, okay? Um, like I said before, they all start with I, so you should know that. Um, otherwise, you're going to be wiring a lot of these. Like I said before, there is only one way to wire inputs, and we can see that right here, okay? So if you guys have any questions, um, please let me know. Like I said, I'm talking so much about this because so many people mess it up, and so many people struggle with this. So let's go ahead, and I'm gonna look at it on the board, one working. I'm gonna show you how I'd like you to submit this lab, and you can get started. Okay, so as a quick going over of how I've got this thing wired, I am starting from my blue DC positive terminal here. I'm coming up, I'm going up into my blue button here, and I'm going back down into my PLC. My common, which is the next one over, is coming up into the rail, going over, and then down into the DC negative. I want you to notice that I'm using blue wires for all of my inputs. Um, it's just because what you're gonna find is out in most uh, industries, they're only gonna use one color to maybe signify inputs and another color to signify outputs. Most of the time, they're just gonna make them all white so that it's really easy for you, right? Um, most of the time they do this mainly to troubleshoot and to help you uh, with the installation so it's easier to trace wires and stuff like that. So just know we're gonna do all of our inputs blue and all of our outputs will be white, okay? So um, good to know. Now. I want to show you something. If we go ahead and we zoom into our PLC here, all these little squares all the way along here, and they're also all the way along the bottom here. Now these little squares, and they're not zeros, they're actually squares, will become lit up whenever there is voltage present oh, on the top ones, I'm sorry, on the top ones that are the I, the inputs, when there's voltage present on the correct terminal, it will actually fill it in and it'll become black, okay? So when I press the button that I have hooked up correctly right now, the first terminal 
or the first square box there should become black and I hope you can see it. Yeah, see that? So now I'm gonna let off the button and it is gonna go clear again, okay? So pressing the button in, letting it out, all right? So if, you, if we go ahead and we can back off a little bit, you can see that all I'm doing is, and I don't know if you can, probably can't see the screen so well from this point, but all I'm doing is pressing the button. So again, I have set up my buttons on the top rail and I've set up my PLC here and I'm gonna do most of my outputs on the bottom. This is not required. It's just how I do it because I like it to be less wiring if possible. All right, so go ahead and what I want you to do is I want you to make me a video showing me that when you press the button, this little, you know, little block in here turns black, okay? So go ahead and, uh, go ahead and uh, video that, explain what's happening. I want you to walk me through this, or this, not the schematic, but the actual wiring and explain all that. I've left my covers off just to show you guys how it looks inside there, but I want your covers on, so. Uh, oh, also a little bit of a, a troubleshooting tip. When I first set this thing up, I, uh, I hadn't pressed in my, hadn't pressed my start button over here. So none of my, my actual um, outputs or my DC positive was not working. All I did was I took my multimeter and I tested over here to see if I was getting DC power and I realized I wasn't. And then I, it hit me that I needed to press the start button. So just so you know, go ahead and uh, get that done, get it submitted.